Thank you. And I'm sure this is the time you all look forward to, our strategic planning. Um, so this is the time when we really want your input on what we need to do um, in the coming 12 months. But this year, um, a little bit different because we've actually come to the end of our current strategic plan. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just give a little bit of a background on how we develop the current strategic plan um, and how we've been managing that over the last three, four years. Uh, and then we can go on to think about what we want to do for the next three years and specifically what we want to achieve, actually achieve this year. So, for those of you who are new particularly, um, what I've got on this slide is a summary of the strategic review process that we did for the current strategic plan. And that was quite an in-depth review of where the Alliance was at um, and where we needed to go um, to meet the needs in the future. So the Alliance actually took a, an external review back in 2010 um, and then we had key, uh, group discussions on the key objectives that that external review um, identified. Uh, the membership was then enga again engaged at the Alliance meeting in 2011 where that draft strategic plan was presented to all of you. Um, we had group discussions on the vision, the mission, the objectives and they were all confirmed. We established working groups for the first time. That's something that hadn't been done before. Um, and each of the working groups undertook in that first year to um, review those objectives and to come up with some recommendations attached to each of those objectives for the board um, to review in June 2012. Then at the 2012 meeting, uh, we actually, each of those working groups reported to members on the uh, uh, actions and outcomes that they would like to see achieved in the three years. And we had a, um, a board report also on those actions for 2013. So in 2013, the working groups um, again came together and, and worked on those actions and outcomes. Whoops, wrong one. So the goal that um, we all agreed on back in 2011 was a world free of ALS MND. And under that, we have a tagline, United in the Worldwide Fight Against ALS MND. Um, and the board have reviewed these. And um, from our perspective, I don't think that we need to change these for the coming three years. Um, I think they still really do encompass what we want to achieve, what we want to see. Um, we all want to work towards that world free of ALS MND. Our vision, we will engage with our members, prospective members and other organisations to share resources globally, to advance awareness and to promote the support of people living with ALS MND worldwide. We also have values um, embedded within our strategic plan and the, va the Alliance is committed to the following values. Our service is to the organisations supporting people living with ALS MND. We will contribute to improving quality of life for people living with ALS MND. We encourage, support and value innovation and research for people living with ALS MND. We respect and value the contribution made by all members and we act responsibly, maintain professional integrity and engage and collaborate with the ALS MND community worldwide. Our mission statement. Our mission as the International Alliance of ALS MND Associations is to promote optimal care and support for all people living with ALS MND, to facilitate information exchange and education at an international level, and to encourage collaboration, dissemination, and translation of ALS MND research. So in, back in 2011, 2012, the four strategic objectives that were set were to develop the operational structure required to achieve our object objectives, to develop and enhance membership, partnerships and programs, to facilitate the exchange of information on ALS MND care, education and research, and to build a sustainable operating funding model for the Alliance. So the next few slides are just going to show, go through quickly um, those key strategic objectives that were set and the recommendations that you as members all came up with 
related to each of those objectives. And there were a lot, <laughs> so I won't read them all out. Um, but what I'll, I'll leave the slide up there just for a little while for you to have a look. And I think what's of most interest really are the, where we're at now, um, what, what we've achieved over the last, last three years together um, with those working groups and with the board and obviously with um, the help of Rachel, our general manager. So you can see with regard to the operational structure required to achieve our objectives, we've made quite a few changes over the last three years re regarding our operational st um, structure. And most of those recommendations that you made, we have achieved, um, which is great. We did make a little bit of a change here. I think the recommendation in the beginning was to recruit an executive director. And what we found, um, Rachel came on board and, and has grown into the position of general manager at the moment. So at the moment, the, the idea is to keep that position. And as we've said earlier, to bring in someone to assist Rachel. To develop and enhance membership, partnerships and programs. And we split these into those three um, key um, objectives around membership, partnership and programs. So with membership, we um, undertook to take a review of the fee structure, which was done, and that was adopted by the members back in 2013. So that's achieved. Partnerships was a big one. Again, lots of recommendations because that's so important to our organisation. Um, and again, a lot of work has gone into this through um, working groups and also the work of Sarah and Ifrat. Um, so a lot has been achieved on that front. A lot of changes have been made. Um, but also a lot of the recommendations obviously are a work in progress and it's something that we keep, need to keep working on into the future. Um, so that certainly will, will happen. With regard to programs, um, again, quite a few key recommendations and actions were, were set, uh, and most of them, again, have been achieved, um, and again, some are ongoing and, and will, will continue to be ongoing. Um, I think there are a few that have not been achieved, um, specifically um, translation of presentations, and as you can imagine, that's quite a huge undertaking, um, would, would entail quite a big investment too, unless somebody within our membership offered to do that. So that's something we can still keep on the back burner and see if we can do that in future years. And more programs, lots to do on the program front as well. Um, again, we work around the Allied Professionals Forum and the Forbes Norris Awards. Um, and again, most of these have been achieved. Next objective, to facilitate the exchange of, object, of information on LSM and care, education and research. And I think the biggest undertaking that we've achieved um, over the last few years is to redevelop the website. That has happened. Um, and again, enhanced engagement with Alliance members between annual meetings. And I hope um, that you feel that that has improved over the last few years. I'm um, certainly newsletters are quarterly um, and there is... Um, more engagement through MailChimp um, and obviously contact with um, Rachel. And again, Ask the Experts and APF sessions online. And, and this year, as you all know, the um, Ask the Experts session is being live streamed and hopefully um, that will continue every year. Funding, um, uh, dependent on funding, obviously. To build a sustainable operating and funding model. Um, again, lots of recommendations and draft actions around that. Um, I think this is something that um, some things have been achieved. We have um, uh, increased the subscription fees with your approval, and that certainly has put us in a much better position um, to be able to really build the alliance. Um, so that is much appreciated. And we've also set up fundraising, online fundraising for those that um, so that we do capture those unsolicited, unsolicited donations. But still, there's a lot to do, I think, on the funding side of things. So the board over the last six months or so has have been reviewing where we're at, where we've been and where we need to go. And we've come up with um, some key draft objectives for 2016 to 2019. Um, and I think what listening to the feedback we've had from all of you over the last little while, 
um, we need to have a greater focus on advocacy and research. I think that's what we're hearing from you um, and certainly that's what Rachel too is hearing from you. And I think where we're at now too with our communications and our awareness, um, we, we've as well established with our communications with social media. So that's something now that underpins every objective that we have rather than needing to be an objective in its own right. So we've drafted these um, five objectives related to advocacy, membership, partnership, information and funding. So objective one for advocacy is to influence communities, governments and other international organisations to support the interests of people living with ALS MND globally. Around membership, um, I think this, uh, this alliance is about membership. The alliance is the members. So um, that is a key objective for us to continue to grow membership and promote the establishment of support organisations where none currently exists. I think that I think you'll probably all agree that this is something that is key to our to our um, our objective. Partnerships to promote support and enhance the alliance partnership program. And again, I think yesterday really demonstrated the importance of this program. Information to facilitate, promote, and review the exchange of information on ALS MND care education and research. And I think the, um, the view of the board when we had our board discussion on Monday is that information encompasses us, the experts, the allied professionals forum, anything where there's that exchange of information can come in under this objective and we can um, flesh that out a little bit more with um, actions and, and outcomes. And of course funding, we, we need to keep funding is, in as a key objective um, because in, a, in order to continue to, in order to grow, we need to have a steady income. So to build a sustainable operating and funding model for the Alliance. So they are the key five objectives, I guess, that we've um, drafted. And w I can open the floor now to any discussions that you may have, if you feel we've missed anything or that we should um, be really focusing on anything else, um, please let us know. Obviously, this is a very high-level plan, and underneath this, we will need to develop a, a much more detailed business plan for each year as we go forward. Anyone got any comments or would like to have any input on where we're at? Yes, Jody. Sorry. A few years, a few years ago, we started working on global travel for PALS, and um, something that's I think is very important and relevant is it's something that we can put as an objective for you know, how do we how do we improve that for our patients? Uh, could you explain what you mean by global travel? Uh, yes, um, as you go through the airport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> okay. Yes, and you yes. see there's one um, chair for a patient there that looks like 50 years old. Um, and if someone really needed that, you know, and if someone's on a plane traveling to these events, for example, I don't know, I would, I would love to find out for patients how hard that is and, um, and how we might be able to put something into writing to, to advise or to share or to suggest helping patients travel more freely. Yeah, I think that really fits nicely under advocacy. And that okay. could certainly be one of the key objectives under the advocacy thank you. objective. Yep, thank you. Pablo? Con mucho beneplácito vemos eh, la calificación de objetivos para los próximos tres años de la Alianza, los cuales adherimos de manera completa. Sin embargo, queremos hacer una propuesta. Well, it is with great pleasure that we see that the objectives for the next period are already drafted and we, we totally agree with them. Uh, we would just like to make a question. Si, ¿Cómo se va a ejecutar y cuál van a, cómo, va, cómo se va a desarrollar estratégicamente cada uno de estos objetivos 
ya que son aspiraciones de máxima y necesitan eh, establecer políticas eh, estratégicas muy concretas eh, y que seguramente nosotros, por lo menos desde Argentina, queremos apoyar eh, activamente. We would like to hear um, more details about how this is going to be developed and how is the how it's going to be executed, also from the political point of view, and of course from from our country, we will we will like to to support the execution and the development of these objectives. Good, thank you. Yeah, well, this is the first step. We've still got a long way to go yet, so we, we need to set these high-level objectives. Um, what I would like us to do now is um, to uh, break into groups and we can come up then with one key recommendation to sit under each of these objectives for this year. Um, we will also, obviously, as a board, create a business plan for this year. Um, but that certainly will be um, something that we'll be working on each year to really identify one key objective that every, all the members want to see achieved in that year. Could I just have the um, presentation back, please? Thank you. Yeah, great. So moving on to the next slide, um, what, I, what I think would be a good way just to start our discussions, we're all going to break into groups in a little minute, um, but I think just take a minute to think about What are the benefits of being a member of the Alliance to you? Why is the Alliance important to your organisation? Maybe just write that down now. Just have a little think about that and write it down on a piece of paper. Um, something the board were, were talking about on Monday was it would be good to have some, um, some of this on our website too. I think it's a question we're asked quite frequently. Why should I be a member of this Alliance? What is the benefit of being a member? And it's a very hard thing, I think, for us as a board to articulate because it's about you guys. Um, why is it important to you to be a member? And um, if you could just take a minute and, and write that down. I'll give you a couple of minutes just to think about that. Thank you. And I think um, just having that little moment to think maybe will help you think about what outcomes you'd like the Alliance to achieve in the next three years as well. Um, so we'll move on to the objectives. I'm not going to ask you to read those out now, but just keep those beside you um, while we do break into groups and um, think about these objectives that we have for the next three years. So to help us develop the Alliance work plan for 2016, what I'd like you to do is to break into five groups um, and identify one goal that you gr your group would like us to focus on this year um, to help us achieve these outcomes. So we want one identified goal, but also how do we get there? And what will the impact of achieving this goal? So we need to have a goal that is achievable within a 12-month time frame is achievable with the resources we have available to us, um, but also has an outcome that is meaningful to all of you as members. So um, it, it's, it might take a little bit of a discussion. So we'll, we'll, and this is a little bit of a change from what we've done in the past, whereby we've had working groups and we've been, had more free-flowing discussion, and then we've asked people to actually form a group to work on those objectives that you identify throughout the year. I think it's very hard for members to stay engaged throughout the year. 
So unless you have a particular passion and want to um, really work with us, and we really would welcome that with open arms, um, but we're not going to actually form formal working groups this year, but we would be very willing to have your input throughout the year. So please think about that as well. So just to remind you, here are the five key objectives related to advocacy, membership, partnership, information and funding. And underneath each one, you'll see that the, um, a board director has been identified to lead these groups. Um, but we also have an extra one now. Gordian has offered to be involved in the funding group. So maybe if we could have those um, board directors get up and um, identify a table for people to join you at. So um, that would be good. And Rachel, do we have a piece of paper to hold up? Is that done or not? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, maybe in that time we've got... Oh, Bob, thank you. Funding up the back with Bob. Don't worry about the paper. Um, Sarah and Efrat are going to... No? Oh, Sarah and me, sorry. <laughs> You're going to Bob. Thank you. So we've got advocacy at the front and funding at the back to start with. I need, to, I need others to identify themselves. Where's Kiki and Teresa? Kiki and Teresa for membership here. So anyone interested in growing membership in your region, engaging members in your region, please join Kiki and Teresa. Evie and Jens are up the back there with partnerships. So if you have a passion for partnerships, up the back. Information, Steve and Bob are over there. You love information, go over to Steve and Bob. How are we going? Everyone completely confused? All right, great. Advocacy, membership, funding up the back, partnerships up the back, information over to the side. Advocacy. Do you want information? All right. Information will include research information. Um, over with Bob and Steve over there. Now, we're, we're not going to have too long for discussion. Um, we'll give you 20 minutes. And then we want everyone to come back and have a general discussion so we all get to hear what is going on. Okay, you, cut, you, you start. <laughs> so we have until five to 10 and then we'll reconvene as a group so that everyone can report back and we can have further discussion.